Hey guys, I just wanted to jump on and give you a quick Market Monday update because um, I'm sure you guys are hearing that the market is shifting or the market is cooling and that is true but it really depends on the market. So we're going to go over this really quick. So if you're looking at houses that are over $250,000, so these are your luxury homes, $300,000, $400,000, $500 million homes. Now, these, the market is shifting the most there for a couple of reasons. One, as the interest rates have kind of come back up to a more average normal level, um, this has put some buyers either completely out of the buying um, pool or has uh, just dropped their purchase power, the purchasing price. So also the um, builders, this is where they're gonna get the most profit. So this is what's being built the past uh, few years. So they're seeing the shift in um, higher supply and lower demand. So they're seeing a much bigger market shift. Now, when you're talking about your houses that are under $200,000, so your 100, 150, $200,000 houses, now these actually depend on the condition of the home that is going to affect prices more than the size of the house or the size of the lot or really even location so the condition of the home now if you're looking at those super newly updated pristine homes those ones are still i mean the market is still really really strong they're going to go very quickly for top dollar and you're going to have to do whatever you can to beat out those other buyers. So that market still strong. It's not going to be skyrocketing upwards anymore, but we should still see a little bit of increase in those. Um, now, if you're talking about like average prices, those the market isn't necessarily shifting for anything under two hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's just more of a cool down. So prices are still increasing just as a slower rate. So what I wanted to compare it to is like the tortoise and the hare, the race. So the hare was like the time, like the because the, the market kind of stopped in the 2008 crash and time just kept flying by. Well, it decided to take a nap. And now the tortoise or the real estate market has kind of caught up to it. And now uh, they've become buddies and they've decided to go at the same pace. Now, when winter comes, they're going to hibernate. <laughs> Just like every winter, uh, housing prices start to trickle back down a little bit. So prices peak in July and August. Now, in 2020, the, um, house, the house prices peaked in September, but that's probably because the whole world shut down for two months, and I think it pushed back that, that peak. But almost every year, houses, housing prices peak in July, August. So from here to December, January, it should trickle down a little bit. Now, before you decide that you're gonna wait, I want you to take into consideration a couple things. Um, one, it's only by a couple percent. Um, and then as the housing prices come down a tad bit, the interest rates may come up. So you still may end up paying more for that house. And then also because of the holidays, this is why prices go down a little bit. Nobody wants to be trying to move and pack up and just all that chaos during the holidays. So make sure you really think about that before you decide if you're going to wait. Now, if you do decide to wait because that's what's best for you, then obviously that's what you should do. But in most situations, as soon as you can buy and want to, that's when you should buy because you cannot play the market. All these people that waited or even sold thinking that they were going to buy when the um, housing market crashed well it's been two years and they're still waiting so you cannot play the market no one knows what's going to happen we can guess but um, the simplest thing can really change everything so you do not want to try to play the market if you can buy now and want to you do it now for um, those average condition homes those ones are going to possibly sit a little bit longer and they're gonna go, that's that's where you're gonna get your best deal. And I wouldn't go below average condition houses, like leave those for the investors. They know what they're doing, they're gonna get in there, do what they can to get the most, most money. Now, if you're looking at investing, we can talk about that, but if you're looking for your primary home, the best thing that you can do is look for average condition homes. I know it's gonna be hard, but try to stay away from the newly updated pristine homes, because you're gonna have a lot of competition, you're going to have to act way too quickly, which you could end up regretting. And um, uh, I forgot the other issue. But then you also have the issue of I have these two separate clients, right? One decided to buy an average condition house and do all the updates themselves. And what was nice about that is one, they got to make their house exactly the way that they wanted it. But two, in doing the updates, they 
found some issues. Now their house could have caught fire if they hadn't found this wiring issue while they were doing the updates. And instead, they were able to catch it before it turned into a major concern. Now I have this other client that bought their dream home with all the updates and now the upstairs shower is leaking into the kitchen. If they would have bought a house and done the updates themselves, this is something that they may have caught, but now they have to, you know, tear up some of those beautiful updates, the reason that they bought the house, fix it, and then put everything back. So there's just multiple reasons that if you're out there, if you're in the market looking, you definitely want to try to avoid the updated houses because they're going to go quick and they're going to go top dollar. Now, average homes, that's where you're gonna get the best deal. And for the next year, when you put all that money into it to make it your dream home, that equ equity is gonna sky rise instead of just trickle up. And yes, the market is still going to triple up upwards. It will you know, trickle down a little bit for December and January, but by next summer, it should uh, bounce back up, probably just slightly higher than right now. So. Um, there's your quick market update. Is the market cooling and shifting? It depends on the market. And if you are looking to buy or sell right now more than ever, uh, pricing is super important. So as a seller, you used to be able to just throw a price out there and buyers would just tell you how much they were willing to pay for it with appraisal guarantees. Well, now it's not that case. Now you have to actually figure out pricing. And even as a buyer, you have to be careful because um, appraisers are going to be fighting back a little bit more, so you can't just offer whatever you want uh, or you're going to have to pay for it. So as these, um, you just make sure that if, if you are selling, you don't want to overprice. You don't want to price where the market was headed because it's not headed there anymore. And as a buyer, you want to keep that in mind too. Just because a house is on sale for $250,000 doesn't mean you're going to have to go two seventy dollars to get it anymore. You can possibly get it at about $250,000, but that's something that you have to make sure that you talk to your agent about and make sure that you're putting the strongest offer, but not overpaying. So make sure that um, you talk to your agent whenever you're ready. And I think that's just the market update. This was a little bit longer, but I wanted to make sure that you understand what's going on to the market. So as prices start to dip back down in December, I don't want you um, I don't want anybody like, getting worried and thinking that the market is just dropping. That's not what's happened. This happens every single year. And by next summer, prices should be back up, just not skyrocketing like they have been. So the market is fixing itself before we got to that bubble for it to pop. So I will see you guys. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you around.